third year here at Air, uh, third year as principal, fifth year here at Airport. Um, we have technology in order to fix the PowerPoint. Uh, again, I, we're trying to feel this process out. We're trying to keep the parents as informed as possible. So I know I've, I, I've talked to a couple of parents who said, God, I wish we could have done it a little bit later because of my work schedule. When we do this again, we're going to adjust. We're, we're feeling it out. But just for that, uh, Ms. Rouse is videotaping the whole thing. Uh, so you'll have all these questions and answers and all the information that you're going to get today. And we're going to put a link, a, a YouTube link out. Mr. Kolzar will send it out to you. And you'll be able to review all this stuff and, and go over all this again with your student at home. Or if you have any questions after you think about it, I'm traditional for that. I go home, I start thinking about things, and then these questions hit me. If they do, email us. Uh, all the teachers' emails were included on the list that you got, uh, as well as mine and Mr. Irwin's, the assistant principal. Feel free to contact us with any questions you have. Um, technology's coming here to fix this. We got a lot going on in this place right now. Um, first off, for the fourth time in five years, we've made uh, AYP through the Michigan Department of Education. It's a tremendous accomplishment. It, it's a, it, it shows how teachers and students and parents working together can have that achievement, and it, it's great. We're one of the few schools in the county that have hit it four out of five years in a row. Um, I know everybody got the information last year on the state's top to bottom list. Everybody talked about that. The last uh, two years ago, the high school was at, in the 14th percentile, which isn't good, in the top to bottom list. We increased 27 percentage points last year alone and moved up into the 41st percentile, which it puts us about middle of the road in the county. Uh, our average ACT score this past year was at 19. That means every student that took the ACT, our average score was 19, which is a tremendous accomplishment. We put in place an academic strategies class for our juniors to take. That's going to help them even raise that up again. Our goal this year is we'd like to go up another point. We'd like to be up to around 20. And to have an average score of 20 is fantastic. There's some good things going on here. We've got three brand new state-of-the-art science labs. If you, have, if you didn't get to make the open house when you're done here, I encourage you to take a walk down this back hallway where a dead ends hang a right and look at those rooms. They are fantastic. On your way out, a brand new state-of-the-art media center. This is mine and yours tax dollars being put into our educational system. It is a phenomenal sight to see. I, was just, I just had a department head meeting and I said I love the absolute chaos when you walk by that media center and there's 90 kids in there with a laptop working and teachers instructing. It's fantastic. Uh, if you get a chance to see those kind of things, please do so. Um, again, I apologize for that. Oh, they've already got it fixed. Obviously, he's a lot better at it than I am. Um, we got a lot of good things going on in events like this that these teachers have put together for you are tons of information. They're going to tell you what pitfalls, because freshman year is the biggest transition. The students are going from being you know, the big fish in a little pond, now they're the little fish in a big pond. And it's, it's tough. It's a tough adjustment socially. It's a tough adjustment academically. These teachers here are going to work and explain all the, the options and all the benefits that they can provide to you and your students to help them succeed when they're here. We've told kids since day one, and I, you probably heard me say this if you were at the parent meeting last year for the uh, eighth graders. If you come to school every day and you do your homework, your chances of graduating four years from now exponentially increase. And we still live by that philosophy. We're doing a new math pilot program. I'm sure some of your students have mentioned that to you. They're learning more freshman year than I did my freshman year in college. And we're teaching it right here. And we've got a great staff to deliver that instruction. Uh, Mr. Kolozar is going to introduce them one by one and go through each portion of their slideshow. If there's any questions that you have afterwards, please contact me. Uh, I'm going to be around afterwards. This is, we want to make sure we keep sight on the fact that this is an information meeting. This isn't a parent-teacher conference. Those are next month. We want to be able to provide as much information to the parents as we possibly can at this time. So, and it's a condensed short amount of time. But feel free, I'll be around afterwards. I'll be here through the whole thing. If you have any questions, ask me. Again, thank you very much for coming. We appreciate all you do for the school district and for your kids and for us. Okay, um, what we arranged here was basically, we, we kind of were talking a few weeks ago and we realized that when it comes down to it, we've never really had a meeting like this and with the construction right before school, everything going on, 
it was kind of tough, you know, with the open house. Was, everything was kind of hurried along just because of the construction not being able to get into the building. So what we did here was we kind of thought, okay, there's a lot of freshman concerns, and there's a lot of programs that are offered that people might not know about. So we're going to go through them, kind of give you an idea of what we offer. Um, pretty much, when it comes to the freshman student, they usually fit into three broad categories. The first one is, uh, my student is struggling, what can we do to help them get better? Uh, the second one is, okay, you know, my kid's hanging in there, grades are decent, but what else is there? What else can they get involved in? What other opportunities are there for them? And the third one is, my students like the world on fire, getting straight A's, what do you have for them? Well, what's, what's there to further them along that's being offered here at airport? So we're going to go through the, the, um, all three things. Um, the first one being the struggling student. Um, and what this one is going to offer is just, we're going to kind of go over some of the common causes. What, what trips kids up in the beginning, and where can they, you know, where can they kind of go right and kind of turn the tables a little bit themselves. And then what we're going to do is go over a couple of things that are offered here at the school that we do to help kids that are struggling. So I'm going to turn it over to other teachers here. Um, again, everyone's kind of got their own little um, presentation they want to give as far as different areas of concern. So the first one, homework, is Mrs. McFadden. Hi, I'm Ashley McFadden. I teach uh, math. I teach Algebra 1. If your child has me, they have me probably for Algebra 1. Um, the one thing I wanted to talk about is homework and how important it is, especially for freshmen, but for all students. And doing the work outside of class is extremely beneficial, not only to the student to help them further their learning that they're doing in class, but when it comes to um, test scores, a lot of times, if they're not doing the homework, if they're not doing the work, it's gonna affect their test scores, it's gonna affect their grade. Um, so homework is extremely important. One thing about homework, um, as a teacher, we know as you start to get behind, it's really hard to get caught up. And a lot of teachers do not accept late work. Um, so it's really hard to get caught up if you're missing a lot of assignments. So one thing about homework is that they want to stay on top of their homework all the time. Um, another thing, um, and I specifically teach math, so we're doing two new math pilots, as Mr. Lucas Savage said. And for us, there are um, some online components that the students can get homework help at home and extra practice on the computer. If you have a computer at home, all of your students have received a login and they're able to log in at home to do extra practice. There's tutorials if they're absent um, to go on there and, and do those things. So, and that's all I want to say about homework. Okay. How, do you, um, how do you know what program, new math program your child has? Uh, your child would know. They're either in a Glencoe or a CME. So they know when we sent home the parent letter, on the top of the parent letter, it said either Glencoe Algebra 1 or CME Algebra 1. Okay. So if you got your parent letter, it should be on there. Yep. Any other questions? I'm Susan Truitt. Uh, I teach resource room uh, algebra. I also have resource room geometry and uh, co-taught financial literacy and algebra too. So if your student is in a resource room class, chances are for math they would have me um, sometime over the four years. Uh, one of the biggest pitfalls that the kids really have is with organization, keeping themselves organized. So just a quote up there, organizing is what you do before you do something, so when you do it, it's not all mixed up. That's the biggest thing we're trying to impart with these guys this year, is that to get organized right from the get-go, because it's really hard once they get into it. Some of the do's that we have, I know this is kind of small and hard to read, so I'll just go through some of the highlights. Make sure all of your students have folders. It's best to keep them color-coded. So they correspond with the books. If they have a blue book, get a blue folder. I know those things sound simple, but it makes a huge difference when they only have five minutes, they get to their locker, they need to grab what they need. Binders are more durable, they hold up better, and it's best to have binders because they'll last up the whole year and hopefully beyond if they take care of them. Uh, when taking notes, reading a handout, highlighters help to highlight important information. Uh, let's see. Student planners. Student planners are great to have. We have them available in the school office if you don't have one at home or if your student doesn't have one. We have them and they go by months and we're happy to give them out to you as you ask for them. They just have to go to the office and say, can I have a planner? We have them available. If you want to take that one step further and have the teachers sign it to see if they completed their work daily, 
we will do that too. There's a lot of students that we do that. They're on academic plans or different, you know, want to keep up with the communication. We, we are always happy to do that. Um, clean out, reorganize those lockers, folders once a week. Go through stuff they don't need. Make sure they don't need it before they get rid of it. That's a big thing so that the clutter doesn't get huge. Schedule difficult times when they're most alert. So maybe when they first get home from school, it's important to get the tough stuff done. Don't wait until it's Sunday night. Don't wait until the last minute. Really try to tackle things when they need to. It'll keep them organized. And that goes with reviewing your notes every day. It's really important when they get their notes. They might come home and say, I have no homework. There's nothing I have to do. But if they took notes that day, it's really important to go through those notes. If they do that every night, they're going to remember those things a lot more often. And then when you hear that excuse, well, I don't need to study. I actually do worse when I study. <laughs> it's kind of a cop out. It's not true. Um, but these things help. The more you go through stuff, the more you won't have to do that jam packed study session right at the end. Um, have extra pencils and pens with you all the time. Those are really important. Don't stuff papers inside your books. That ruins the book bindings. It makes your stuff all unorganized. So those are just some big keys. So going with my don'ts, um, don't use the same folder for every class. Law students will come to us and say, oh, I got it all. It's all in this folder. But then you open up that folder, and it has history and English and math and everything all together. It's really easy for them to get things lost. So try to have something different. Um, stuff the papers in your book. We see this all the time. They fold up their assignment, stick it in there. Well, I'm good. But then they forget their book, or they take someone else's book, the papers disappear. Don't tell yourself you'll do better if you don't study. I went over that one. Also, talking to your friends in the hallway. A lot of freshmen really, you know, don't, they don't see their friends very often because sometimes they don't socialize outside of school. So they try to make those five minutes last into ten minutes. When they do that, they're tardy for class, but also they forget. They say, oh, you know, I got all my stuff, and then once they get into class, they go, oh, no, I forgot my binder. Oh, I forgot my book. I forgot something else. So you really need to make sure you're going from class to class, get to your locker, get the stuff you need, and then move on. And that way you'll be all prepared when you start class. One other donut I kind of want to add it on to that, too. A lot of kids like to switch their lockers, meaning, you know, for example, a girl maybe wants to be in a locker with her boyfriend, and then all of a sudden they get in a big fight, and she storms off with this world history book, and then he comes to me and says, yeah, I don't have my world history book. My girlfriend, my ex-girlfriend accidentally took it. Well, I get it back from her. I'm afraid to talk to her. They switch lockers a lot in situations like this do happen, so another donut I like to throw in there is keep your own lock. You have to keep your own lockers. And the books that they're assigned to them at the beginning of the year is the book that they have to turn in at the end of the year. It's not algebra for an algebra book. So the algebra book that they signed out with us, they have to turn back in. So if they need to keep track of their stuff and make sure they have all their materials. Thank you. Okay. This is mine. I'm Dana Wallagore. I teach English 9. I have four sessions of, or sections of freshmen. I am known around the school as someone who, this is my biggest pet peeve, and my students know I have many, many pet peeves. It's tardies. I can't stand someone who's not on time. I am a bell-to-bell -bell teacher. When that bell rings, my students are at work. 15 seconds, 30 seconds, it makes a difference. So I kind of just simply put the definition of what it means to be tardy. My students know it. They know that bothers me. Very important life skill. I always tell my students, you know, your future employers, if you are late to work, what's going to happen? Okay, it's eventually going to catch up to you. So tardies to me are very much bothersome in my class. Disrespectful, it's very rude to others. Thus, being punctual will teach them definitely a life skill that they definitely need to know. And it shows respect for others and myself as well. So tardies are a huge problem at the high school. We stand in the hallways, the teachers, that bell rings. I am not kidding you, there must be 30 students still in the hallway. And they do not move. I mean, that bell didn't even ring. And some of these teachers can attest to that. So that is my biggest, I guess, pet peeve. So I really want to encourage you um, to let your son or daughter know that being punctual is very important. It shows respect. And it's just a life skill that needs to be addressed. Hi, I'm Deanne Buell. I teach physical science. And uh, being prepared in class is kind of the same line as the last two presenters in that you have to come in on time, you 
you need to have your pencil, all your materials with you. There's not time to go back to your locker after things. If my students are late, or excuse me, they come in without those materials, we've been in for six weeks now. They should know a routine on how to get to their locker, get to class on time. Um, I mark them tardy if they have to go back. And if they're just sharing a book, why would you ever come prepared if I let you take one from the room? Because you know that you'd be provided with the materials there. Um, so if we go through the list, as things were said, they have to have notebook, paper. So many kids come without anything to write with, and we're going to be writing every day. In math class, a lot of times in science class, they need a calculator. The gym class, obviously they have to have their clothes, their tennis shoes, different things that are important for them. Uh, having the homework complete, I tell the students to have a folder just for the one class, be able to open it up and see what was in front, and they would know right away if that has been asked for or not. You know, it's like, Mrs. Buell, I still have this assignment, and I would accept it at that point. They're on top of it. Um, phone, music devices should be left in the locker. I'm dealing with a lot of students. They come in, the tardy bell rings. They might be sitting in their class, but they're sitting there listening to their music, fidgeting for a different song. They're not ready to learn. Those things, please tell them not to bring them to school. Um, and that even the personal needs take care of. They have five minutes. It's enough time to get to the bathroom, get to their locker. Um, if they're not in the classroom, they're not getting the material and the instruction that's needed. Hi, my name is Amanda Carvis. I teach 11th grade English and freshman health, and I'm also the National Honor Society advisor. What we offer here at airport is the National Honor Society will start tutoring students next week, Monday through Thursday, from approximately 2.20 to 3 o'clock. I have great National Honor Society students that are ready to help any kids, not just freshmen, um, with any subject area. They can come one day a week, they can come every day, Monday through Thursday. Um, it's really at their convenience and your convenience. If they need, if after school doesn't work and they need a lunch tutor, I can also arrange that with my um, NHS students. We have approximately 60 members, so there's enough of them to go around and help tutor. It starts next Tuesday in the library. It will be supervised by of these wonderful teachers over here. If you have questions or your child, this might not work for you, but you need something a little different, maybe before school, we can even see if we can arrange that. If you uh, want to contact me, I'll put my email up there. So if you have any questions, please email me and I'll give you all the information on tutoring. It's a great program and my NHS kids are really good and excited to start it. So just let me know if you need anything. I'm the at-risk coordinator at the high school. Um, I feel very fortunate uh, that airport has an at-risk coordinator. I believe we're the only school, high school in the district that has uh, someone in my position. Um, and it's, it's a new trend starting in schools through the state. Um, not, not many at-risk coordinators uh, throughout Michigan yet, but it is growing. Um, kind of give a brief synopsis of what I do. I work with students who, who may be in the struggling area struggling with grades, struggling with a lot of the things that teachers have already covered as far as um, punctuality, tardies, disciplines, um, kind of a wide variety of things that I work with students on. Um, but as I have up here, um, if there's any questions throughout this, please give me a call. I'd love to set up a meeting with anyone that if you think uh, you'd like your student to work with me, um, just give me a call. I can meet at any time. I'm pretty flexible wise in that. Um, service I provide, uh, parents can call me at any time throughout the day, and I, and I forget who was talking about it, but um, students saying something to the parents that they don't have books or this or that. Um, I just had a parent call the other day and say, hey, my son says that he doesn't get any books from any of his classes, um, so he doesn't bring anything home. Are you guys all online? And I'm like, no. Um, so I can run around. Right then, I instantly went to all teachers. 
um, and said, hey, is this student allowed to take his books home? Found out what student or uh, what classes they can take their book home. Called the parent right back and informed him of that. But even from that small to, hey, my student is failing all their classes, we need to figure something out. Um, and we'll come up with a plan on that. Um, so as you see, covers grades, behaviors, anything that you need. I kind of stress that to parents. If there's anything in the school that you need, um, call me. I can usually get something to happen, and if I can't, I usually know who will get something going on right there. Um, for your students, I provide weekly, like in-class visits. Um, a lot of times I don't have to go to the class. Students come see me every week. Um, but if they don't, I, I minimum will see them at least once a week. Go over their grades, go over any missing homework, go over any low tests, any upcoming tests or upcoming assignments that they have coming up, and um, offer help, see what they need help on, see how secure, comfortable they feel with what they've got coming up. Uh, and any discipline issues that may have arose, uh, usually discuss that with them, see what we can do to fix that in the future. Um, and then like during the week, the students are allowed to come down, um, depending on what they have in their classroom. But even in between classes, I try to make sure that I get them back before I swallow the board yells at them. Um, <laughs> but I, to, to just quick check-ins with me, quick check-ins about their work, any assignments they may need help on. Um, very lucky again this year, I got uh, eight new computers in my, in my office area that students can work on. And if they don't have a computer at home, they can come in, uh, work on them in there. Um, and as Ms. Truett was saying, students, you know, make sure they have their binders. Also help students out if they don't, I mean, I know some students can't afford it sometimes. We can't afford everything that comes into school. Um, help students get their binders, help students get folders, anything along those lines, pens, pencils. Uh, I can work with the counselors to get about anything from shoes to a piece of paper. Um, also we run a, with Ms. Carvis, um, a buddy program with the National Honor Society students, trying to pair up some of the National Honor Society students with some students who, who need that one-on-one -on -one help sometimes from another student. Um, that worked out. It was the first time last year we ran it. I thought it worked out very well. Service so left. <laughs> um, but I thought it worked really good. We had a lot of success with it. And we also have a uh, teacher-student mentoring program that we started last year as well. That also received a lot of uh, good compliments from the students. From that's usually how I gauge things. If a student likes it, one it could be bad or one it could be good. Um, and I got a lot of positive comments out of uh, getting to know some of the teachers a little bit different from out of the classroom um, and getting to know them just in the hallways or passing in lunch or something like that. Um, let me see. But with that, yeah. With that, if you guys need anything, please give me a call. If, like I said, if I can make it work, I definitely will. If I can't, I usually bug Mr. Lucas Savage till I can. Um, with that, I also run the credit recovery program at the school here. Um, hopefully, I won't be seeing any of your students, but um, come after the first semester, if the students are failing, have failed any classes, we're gonna have to make those credits up. And I try telling parents and students it's better to start right away uh, to make those up. I work with a lot of seniors who failed two classes their freshman year, one their sophomore, two their junior year, and now they're in their senior year and they have to make those classes up uh, and they're struggling to do it. A student fails a class the first semester here. Uh, we run a before school credit recovery program. It's a fully online program. Uh, it's $100 per class. So if they fail one class, which is a half credit, it's $100, which is the cheapest in the county, I know for sure. Um, and they'll come in, it's purely student-based. They uh, work at their pace to get it done. Some students get through a lot quicker than others. Uh, I'll be there every morning to help them if they need help. And I also start uh, asking teachers um, for some classes that I don't know how to help them too. Teachers will step in a lot and uh, come in to help them out with certain subjects that I might not be um, up to par on. Um, and that starts October 29th. Like I said, none of your students will be experiencing that yet. But after first semester, uh, when you get report cards and you do see, hopefully none of you do, but if you see a failing class, please get a hold of me and we can, we can 
can set something up then to uh, start getting those credits back right away. Thanks. Pleasure. I'll be around if anyone has any questions after, too. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jill Van Washington, and I'm a resource room teacher here at the high school, so I'm going to talk to you briefly um, about special education services. Um, as far as if students are, when students are identified as special um, needing special education services, they're put on an individualized education plan. And um, with that plan, we develop a program or a service for the student, depending on the nature of the disability and what the needs of the students are. Um, and again, these IEPs are a wide range, and they service a wide range of disabilities and um, a wide range as far as time that the student receives special education services. Um, but also with that IEP, if a student um, is on an IEP, they are granted accommodations in the general education classroom, so that could be extended time on assignments, or it might be to have tests run orally. Um, and then also when they are taking the state test, the ACT, the MME, the MEET, um, sometimes the students are granted those accommodations on that test as well. As far as um, how we service the students, sometimes the students um, just receive, they just receive accommodations in the general education classroom. Um, sometimes the students are placed in co-taught classrooms, which there would be a general education teacher and a special education teacher in that classroom to give them the support. Um, and then if they're still needing more time than that, then they would go into a resource room class, and then we do also have a self-contained program here that is through the ISD. Um, just kind of with, obviously, the disabilities that we service here at the high school, there's a wide range, but I just kind of listed the primary um, ones that we, um, as far as students with these disabilities here at the high school, learning disabled is obviously our most common, um, emotionally impaired, speech and language impaired, um, and then sometimes we do have the hearing impaired and visually impaired. Um, if you have any questions or want more information on it, please contact me and I can steer you in the right direction or give you the information that you need. All right. Part two, I just call it getting involved. But what this one really is, is, okay, you know, my kid's hanging in there. Like I said, A's, B's, maybe a C, a couple C's. But either way, they're hanging in there, they're doing well. What else is there to get involved in? You know, eventually, they're going to want to go to college. They need stuff for college application. You know, what else is there that can keep them out of trouble, help them beef up a college education? application, what do you have here? So that's what we're going to get into next. My name is Angie Moore, and I teach Spanish and ninth grade English. We have a lot of activities that your student can get involved in. We have clubs, we have the green team, and that club promotes um, different um, activities to help with the environment, help, help make people aware of how to have a cleaner environment. They are going to start their first meeting this month. Then there's a theater club. The theater club is going to start their meetings this Thursday and are gonna go every other Thursday. Um, it will be right after school. You don't need to be in drama class and you don't need to be a part of the productions. You could just wanna help with scenery. You could be, wanna be involved in some way. And that is in room 101. We also have the Interact Club, and that is a club that meets on the third Wednesday of every month, and they meet during lunches. So your student can come whenever their lunch is, and that is a, is a group that likes to help with different charitable organizations, and they do different things around the community, the state, and even they've sent money, I know, to Guatemala. They do all sorts of charitable-based projects. So right now, I know they are working on a project where they want to raise money and they're buying um, supplies and things to help comfort people that are going through chemotherapy right now and so they're trying to make 80 backpacks up to give to people that just things to help comfort them during their time that they're in the hospital. So that's what that group does and then we have the Spanish Club. We meet every month just very briefly in the morning that's just so that we can plan our after school activities. We try to do one big activity a month. Our next month, we are going to be going to Toledo to um, see a Day of the Dead exhibit. And then we have also Student Council. And Student Council, everybody is invited to get involved. Really, they have the Student Council for this year, but at the end of the year, your student can um, fill out an application, and then they can apply with 
Mrs. Rouse to get involved with Student Council. And that is a group that tries to help boost student morale. And they also do other activities for the community. They are in charge of homecoming. And they just do all sorts of stuff around the school. It's a very involved group. And then we also have classes that not only are during school hours, but they also involve after school hours. Here we have um, the band, which has jazz band, there's drum line, marching band, and your student would be involved after school with that. We have a chamber choir, and now we have an a cappella choir, and they are still looking for boys to join that. So they, um, you do have to try out. They, I believe they have all the girls for this year, but they are looking for boys. So if you have a boy that would like to do that. And then we have the journalism class. And in that class, they write about activities and events in the school, and they take pictures. But that requires a lot of work outside and inside. Um, they should expect to do a lot of writing. Um, but it's something really fun that they can get involved also with, with school. So if your student really enjoys that to um, get involved with also, we have a yearbook class, and the yearbook is on sale right now for $60. <laughs> <laughs> and you can buy it during the parent-teacher conference. We have many sports. These are all sports that are offered. Football, cross-country. We have um, girls' golf, equestrian team. We have boys' tennis, volleyball, and boys' soccer. Which also just to add on to that, with the exception of volleyball, um, everybody makes the other teams, as far as I know, which means, again, it's not like, oh, you know, my son or daughter's afraid they're not going to make a team. There are teams that everybody's allowed to participate in as well. And then we have our winter sports. We have competitive cheer. There's also sideline cheer for fall. And um, basketball for boys and girls. And we have the wrestling. Yeah, we have hockey. Oh, I'm sorry, hockey. And that is a new sport. And then we have spring sports. We have track and baseball, softball. We have girls tennis, boys golf, and girls soccer. And then actually Mrs. Kennedy would like to speak about her club. Hi, I'm Sue Kennedy and I have four Spanish 1 classes and also a Spanish 3-4 class. In addition to helping uh, Mrs. Moore with Spanish Club, which we've been doing together for a long time, we also offer a, a club on Thursdays, every Thursday after school, called the Fellowship of Christian Students. And students come and they bring their Bibles and we read and we talk about stories. They can ask questions and we pray. And uh, Mr. Chris Casper, who is a long-term sub this year, is also helping me to do that. So every Thursday after school till about 3.15. Thank you. And uh, one other club I'm just going to throw out there is uh, the Quiz Bowl team. That's Shane self promotion is my coach. But uh, uh, every year we, um, it has five kids, and it's a mandatory. Two of the kids on the team have to be freshmen. So this is open to freshmen. I always tell the freshmen, don't think, oh, it's just going to be five seniors. The rules specifically state no more than two seniors and a minimum of two freshmen. So it's fun. They get to play with buzzers all the time. And they end up uh, going to the Monroe ISD competing against the other high schools in Monroe County in basically a Jeopardy style contest. So it's, it's something they would like to get involved. That's another one we have. Um, all right, part three is okay, my you know, my kids get all A's or all A's and B or really high grades. What else is offered here? What else can they get into? Some of the clubs that Mrs. Moore mentioned, like Interact, for example, is a great example. I mean, a lot of the sports they're involved with. What else can they do? And a bit what we have is AP classes. Um, Airport High School is in the top three in Monroe County with AP offers. To give you an idea, Jefferson down the road only offers one AP class. We offer all of these. Um, we have we calculus, statistics, biology, chem, US, history, world history, English lit, and psychology, which will be offered starting next year. Um, these AP classes are graded on a five-point scale instead of the traditional four-point scale. Basically, students can get higher than 4.0s total. Um, also, with this, um, they uh, can earn college credit. What happens is, in May, they take a test that's $90. It's $90, it's a $90 test. They take it uh, through the college board here at school, and if they pass the test, they can get college credit for ever entering a college classroom, which $90 is expensive for a test, but at the same time, you know, it means paying three college credits. So there are a lot of opportunities.
them to walk into college already having quite a few credits. I know I'm the AP World History teacher and I, kids can earn up to six college credits in my class and I know it's the same for a lot of these classes. So there's a lot of college credits that can be earned before they ever leave Airport High School. They stay here in the school, they can take them here where they're familiar, where they're comfortable. It's a nice program to have. Um, so like I said, we have lots of offerings for that. Um, any questions on that one? All right, so this is going to the spot. Hi, my name is Jennifer Williams, and I'm Bridget Baden. And we are um, the freshman class officer advisors. Um, some of our officers are sitting at the back table with the boxes. Um, they're going to be back there collecting dues after the meeting. You owe um, $20 for each freshman. Um, it's $5 for every year that they are here at airport. Um, we are offering a deal to this week. Um, if you pay the $15 or $15 class due money this week, um, that's all you owe. You'll save with $5. You won't have to pay the $20. So if you pay the dues this week, it's $15 instead of $20. Um, they have to pay their class dues before they will receive their diploma um, when they graduate. We also are running two fundraisers right now. One is a freshman t-shirt. We have pictures of the t-shirt in the back. We're accepting pre-orders um, before we order them. They are $10. Um, it says class of 2016. And it has a little slogan on the back. We also are running a Schwann fundraiser, um, which is going to start next week as well. There is an order form. Your freshmen will, um, you can pick them up as you leave. We also will be dropping them off to the freshmen in their English classrooms. Um, if every freshman could just sell one thing, it would greatly help us out. This money is used to fund activities such as they have to plan homecoming junior year. Junior year, they also put on prom. And senior year, it helps pay for graduation and their all-night senior party. The more money we have to work with, um, the more that we can offer your child. calculators quite a bit and what I tell them is I cannot allow a cell phone out during a test and if they don't have one for homework they're not going to remember on test and for my class it's 
just multiplying and dividing. They should be able to do it longhand. Calculator wouldn't have to be used. But they could email test answers back and forth so quickly that that's why I say no. And in a pinch, because I don't know, I have some junky just dollar store stuff. So I'm down to about 18. So if you guys could help out, and all, again, just need one that can multiply and divide, and that way there doesn't have to be any issues of accusations of cheating that they're texting answers. Other questions? Yes? Um, regarding the sports, um, some of the kids in our neighborhood are talking about bowling. Mm -hmm. Yes, bowling is, a, is an offered in the winter. Uh, that should they can have to listen to announcements, but it, it should be started up within the next month. Uh, last year, a bowling team did very well, won the league title in both. And I went to one bowling event last year, and it was one of the most intense sporting events I've ever been at. <laughs> and I played college athletics, so that it, it's great. It's a great program. Get some information as far as like um, practices, things like yeah, that. Yeah, and when, what they'll do is the coach will come in and have a parent, or we'll have a meeting with the students so that they know the time frame and everything else when, when the season starts and how it goes on. Other questions? I, I go back, and our teachers are going to be around for another 15, 20 minutes to help you out with any questions that you have for them individually. If your kid comes home and tells you their head is spinning because there's so much going on here, that's pretty accurate, and that's a good thing. We can control that. I, I tell anybody that will listen, I'm very fortunate, I'm blessed to be the principal of this building. I have a great community that I work with, I have a great teaching staff that I work with, and I have a phenomenal student base that I work with daily. And I, I can't be more appreciative of the time that, we try to cram a lot in in a short amount of time, we don't want to take up your whole day. But the teachers and the students and the parents working together guarantee success for your child. And statistics show them being involved in their extracurriculars, whether it's a club or a sport or whatever, that generates success. We're here to answer any questions that you have. I thank you very much for coming. I know if you have any other questions, you can, Mr. Colazar will be sending out the link. Look at the YouTube video. If you have any other questions, email one of these great people that are here. Email myself. We'll answer any questions you have. Oh, I have one more thing to say. Yes. Um, I really love parent participation in the Spanish Club, and some of you have already been chaperones and drivers for our events, and I don't know about the other clubs, but we're always looking for uh, parent involvement, So, and we would appreciate it because our activities are after school, there's no busing involved, and so we do need to have parent drivers because students are not allowed to drive, of course, to a school-sponsored event. So if your student is taking in the Spanish Club, it, it would be great when they get their permission slip. It's first come, first serve. So we love to partner with you. My kids went to school here, so I'm a parent too. And I'd love to see your, your involvement if you can. I know some of you have to work, but if you can take the day off that day and join us, I think you'll have a lot of fun. Thank you very much for coming.